What are secondary gold deposits? Definition and key characteristics. Secondary gold deposits are concentrations of gold that have been redeposited away from their original, or primary, source. These deposits form through natural geological processes, most commonly weathering, erosion, and transport. Over time, gold that was initially hosted in hard rock formations, typically in quartz veins or sulfide minerals, undergoes mechanical breakdown and chemical alteration due to exposure to air, water, and biological activity at or near Earth's surface. As these primary rocks degrade, gold particles are released and begin to move under the influence of gravity, rainfall, and flowing water. This transportation can be short-range, forming alluvial deposits just downslope of the original source, or long-range, resulting in alluvial deposits in riverbeds, floodplains, and even coastal environments. These processes sort the gold based on its high density and resistance to chemical breakdown, concentrating it in specific geological traps like gravel layers, potholes, or inside natural riffles of riverbeds. One of the key features of secondary gold deposits is that the gold is usually found in free form, as flakes, grains, or nuggets, rather than chemically bonded with other elements. This makes it more accessible and easier to extract, especially using gravity-based methods such as gold panning or sluicing. The size, purity, and distribution of gold in secondary deposits vary greatly depending on the nature of the source rock, the length and type of transport, and the depositional environment. In summary, secondary gold deposits are the result of nature's ability to concentrate gold through breakdown, movement, and redeposition. These deposits are often easier and more cost-effective to mine than primary sources, making them historically and economically important across many gold-producing regions worldwide. How does gold redistribute through physical and chemical weathering? The redistribution of gold from primary sources into secondary deposits is driven by the powerful and continuous forces of physical and chemical weathering. These natural processes break down rocks, release gold particles, and transport them across landscapes, often concentrating them in new locations far from where they originally formed. Physical weathering, breaking down the host rock. Physical weathering, also known as mechanical weathering, involves the physical breakdown of rocks without changing their chemical composition. In the case of gold, this typically begins in primary gold deposits, where gold is embedded in hard rock, often quartz veins or sulfide-rich ores. Over time, environmental factors such as temperature fluctuations, freeze-thaw cycles, plant root growth, and abrasion by wind or water cause the surrounding rock to fracture and crumble. This exposes the gold and allows liberated particles to be separated from the host material. Once free, these gold particles, because of their high density and malleability, behave differently from lighter minerals. During rainfall or surface runoff, they tend to settle quickly and accumulate in depressions or behind natural obstacles. In areas with strong water flow, such as rivers and streams, gold is sorted by hydraulic action, gradually concentrating it in specific zones where the energy of the moving water drops. Chemical weathering, altering the rock and releasing gold. Chemical weathering involves the decomposition or alteration of minerals through chemical reactions with water, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and acids. This is particularly important in breaking down sulfide minerals, such as pyrite or arsenopyrite, that may host microscopic or disseminated gold. When these minerals oxidize, often through exposure to oxygen and water, they form soluble compounds and release fine gold particles that can be mobilized. In tropical and humid regions, Intense chemical weathering leads to the formation of lateritic soils, where gold may be enriched near the surface due to the leaching of more soluble elements and the residual concentration of heavier, less mobile components like gold. Additionally, biological weathering can play a role, as certain microbes and plant root systems contribute to the chemical breakdown of rocks and mobilization of metals, including gold. Transport and Deposition, From Liberation to Concentration after being liberated through weathering, gold particles begin to move, mainly via gravity, surface runoff, and river systems. As gold is one of the heaviest naturally occurring elements, it doesn't travel as far as lighter materials. This leads to natural sorting, 
where coarse gold settles closer to the source, while finer particles may travel farther before being deposited. Over time, these transported particles accumulate in areas where the energy of the transporting medium, usually water, decreases, such as river bends, floodplains, or at the base of hill slopes. These are the classic environments of secondary, placer, gold deposits. In summary, the transformation of gold from a primary load into a secondary deposit is a result of interconnected weathering and transport processes. Physical weathering breaks down the rock, chemical reactions release the gold, and natural forces carry and concentrate it into accessible and often economically valuable accumulations. Environments where secondary gold deposits form Secondary gold deposits form in a variety of geological environments where gold, originally liberated from primary sources by weathering and erosion, becomes transported and redeposited. These environments are shaped by physical processes such as gravity, water flow, and sedimentation, and their characteristics influence how, where, and in what concentration gold accumulates. Each environment has distinct geological features that affect the size, purity, and accessibility of the gold. Below are the main types of environments where secondary, also called placer, gold deposits are typically found. 1. Alluvial environments, riverbeds and floodplains. Alluvial deposits are the most well-known and economically significant type of secondary gold deposit. They form in active river systems, where flowing water transports gold particles away from their original host rock and deposits them in areas of low hydraulic energy, such as inside river bends, behind boulders, or in natural traps at the river bottom. Gold in these settings tends to accumulate in gravel layers, particularly where there is a sudden drop in water velocity. The gold is usually found in association with other heavy minerals like magnetite, garnet, or black sands. These deposits may be modern, forming in current river channels, or ancient, preserved in terraces or paleo channels that no longer carry active water flow. Because of the ease of access and high concentration of free gold, alluvial placers have historically been the focus of gold rushes around the world. 2. Alluvial Deposits Hill slope accumulations. Alluvial deposits form close to the original source of gold, often on gentle slopes or just downslope from weathered primary loads. They are the result of in situ weathering, where rocks break down and release gold, but there is minimal transport by water. In these settings, gold accumulates in soil, regolith, or weathered bedrock, often mixed with coarse rock fragments and clay. Because transport is limited, the gold tends to be coarser and angular, showing less rounding than gold found in alluvial systems. Alluvial placers are often indicators that a primary gold source lies upslope. As such, they are valuable in exploration as pathfinders to nearby load deposits. 3. Colluvial deposits, gravity-driven accumulations. Colluvial gold deposits form through gravity-driven mass movements, such as landslides, soil creep, or rockfall. In these environments, gold-bearing materials from upslope are deposited at the base of slopes, hills, or escarpments. Unlike alluvial systems, colluvial deposits are poorly sorted and typically consist of a mixture of angular rock fragments, soil, and debris. Gold within colluvia may be found in patches, often protected within pockets of clay-rich material or trapped among larger clasts. These deposits are more common in mountainous or tectonically active regions, where slope instability frequently causes material to move downslope. 4. Lateritic and residual deposits, tropical weathering zones. In tropical regions with intense chemical weathering, especially where rainfall is high and temperatures are consistently warm, gold can become concentrated in lateritic soils. These are deeply weathered profiles formed from prolonged leaching of bedrock. As soluble elements, such as iron, magnesium, and calcium, are stripped from the rock, insoluble materials like quartz and gold are left behind. Over time, this can lead to residual enrichment of gold at or near the surface. Lateritic gold deposits are usually fine-grained and may require specialized processing techniques for recovery. Although they may not always contain large nuggets, their extent can be significant over wide areas. 5. Coastal and Beach Placers, Marine Influence 
In some regions, gold is transported all the way to coastal environments, where it can accumulate in beach sands. These types of deposits form through the interaction of wave energy and tidal currents, which sort heavy minerals and concentrate gold in specific zones, usually just above or below the high tide line. While not as common as river or alluvial placers, beach placers can be productive, especially in areas where ancient rivers once discharged gold-rich sediments into the sea. These deposits often contain fine gold mixed with other heavy minerals like zircon, ilmenite, or rutile. Conclusion The environment in which a secondary gold deposit forms plays a critical role in determining the grade, particle size, and recoverability of the gold. From riverbeds to lateritic soils, each setting offers unique geological clues that guide exploration and mining efforts. Understanding these environments not only helps locate gold more effectively, but also sheds light on the dynamic surface processes that shape Earth's mineral wealth. Exploration and Recovery Techniques for Secondary Gold Deposits Exploring and recovering gold from secondary deposits requires a combination of geological understanding, field techniques, and processing methods tailored to the specific environment in which the gold has accumulated. Because gold in secondary, placer, deposits is typically found in free, unbound form, such as flakes, grains, or nuggets, it can be more easily separated from surrounding materials than gold locked in hard rock. However, the challenge lies in locating high concentration zones and efficiently extracting the gold with minimal environmental impact. This section breaks down both the exploration and recovery stages, highlighting traditional and modern methods used by prospectors, artisanal miners, and industrial operations. 1. Exploration Techniques – Finding the Gold A. Geomorphological Analysis Understanding the landscape is critical in placer exploration. Prospectors look for certain topographic features that favor gold accumulation, river bends, terraces, old channels, paleo channels, gulches, and slope bases. Studying drainage patterns, sediment transport paths, and erosion zones helps determine likely depositional areas. B. Pan sampling. Gold panning is one of the oldest and simplest field techniques. Small amounts of sediment are collected from various locations, e.g., gravel bars, streambeds, or hillside soils, placed in a pan, and washed with water to separate heavy minerals. The presence of gold specks or flakes serves as a direct indicator of nearby deposits. See Sluice Testing and Trenching Where gold is suspected, test pits or trenches may be dug to sample deeper layers of sediment. In river settings, this helps reveal buried gold-rich gravel beds. Portable sluices or mini high bankers may be used to process larger volumes of material in the field for better estimates of grade and concentration. D. Geochemical and Geophysical Surveys Modern exploration may use soil geochemistry to detect trace gold and pathfinder elements like arsenic, antimony, or mercury. In some cases, geophysical methods such as ground-penetrating radar, GPR, or electromagnetic surveys help map buried channels or old riverbeds where gold may have accumulated in the past. 2. Recovery Techniques – Extracting the Gold Once gold-bearing material is located, the next step is its efficient recovery. Secondary gold deposits are usually mined using gravity-based separation methods, which exploit the high density of gold compared to surrounding materials. A. Panning Ideal for small-scale or preliminary recovery, gold panning separates heavier particles through manual swirling and washing. It's labor-intensive but highly effective for visible gold and is still widely used by prospectors to evaluate the richness of a deposit. B. Sluice Boxes and High Bankers Sluices use flowing water and riffles to trap gold as sediment flows over a ramp or channel. High bankers are upgraded versions with their own water pumps, allowing them to operate away from water sources. These are commonly used by small-scale miners and can process much larger volumes than panning. See Spiral Concentrators and Shaking Tables In more advanced operations, spiral concentrators or shaking tables separate gold based on its specific gravity and particle size. 
These tools are effective for recovering fine gold particles that might escape panning or sluicing methods. D. Trommels and wash plants. Larger scale placer mining often uses trommel screens, which separate coarse material, rocks and gravel, from finer gold bearing sediments. The fine material is then fed into sluices or centrifugal concentrators for gold recovery. These systems are efficient in high volume operations, particularly in alluvial mining. E. Metal detectors. In alluvial or dry placer areas, metal detectors can help locate shallow gold nuggets that are too sparse to be recovered by bulk methods. Modern detectors are highly sensitive and can identify metallic signals through several inches of soil, making them useful in exploration and cleanup phases. 3. Environmental and Practical Considerations While placer gold recovery is often less invasive than hard rock mining, it still poses environmental challenges, especially in fragile river ecosystems. Responsible miners implement practices such as Rehabilitating disturbed ground after mining Avoiding mercury use in gold recovery Minimizing water pollution and sediment disturbance. Using closed-loop water systems where possible. Additionally, local regulations may govern where and how placer mining is allowed. In many regions, permits are required even for small-scale operations, especially near water sources. Conclusion Exploring and recovering gold from secondary deposits is both an art and a science. It blends traditional knowledge, field intuition, and modern technology to uncover one of Earth's most sought-after resources. Whether through panning in a mountain stream or operating a full-scale wash plant, the principles remain the same, locate natural gold traps, understand the sedimentary processes, and use gravity to your advantage. With proper technique and environmental care, secondary gold deposits continue to be a valuable and sustainable source of gold around the world.